Hi, welcome along to another video. I'm going to carry on on the uh, chemtrail conspiracy theme. In the first part, I'm going to continue with stuff from the BBC. Then we'll take a look into um, exactly what it is YouTube are suggesting. And if there's enough time at the end, we'll do some general conspiracy stuff. That general conspiracy stuff might have some, well, let's say, darker subjects involved. So if you're not in the best of spirits today, maybe give that a miss. If you're in good spirits today, then you'll probably be okay. It's nothing you haven't heard before. Um, if you're thinking it's going to be Jackie Kennedy killed John Kennedy, then I can assure you it's not. It's going to be about very real world conspiracies. It's on with the show. Uh, <laughs> the images you're seeing are from BBC program from quite a few years ago. I'll put a link to it in the information box. There'll be other links there too. Anything I think that needs linking to for you to be able to easily watch on YouTube, um, I'll stick a link in the information box. Just quickly though, uh, got some sports news in. So Wimbledon is cancelled this year. So I'll show a clip from Wimbledon 2016. Seeing as there is no Wimbledon this year, such a shame. So sticking with um, the BBC, and so the image, uh, the video you've been seeing images from, is called "Clouds of Secrecy," and from the same people that we got the last article from in the last part, Inside Out. And the same BBC uh, department, Inside Out, made a program about what was going on. So the article, though, Clouds of Secrecy, we'll have a read through that completely because it's very descriptive, and we'll skip on, uh, we'll touch lightly onto another article, and then we'll move on to other stuff. So reading this um, from November the sixth, two thousand and six. Inside of account, clouds of secrecy. Between 1953 and 1964, top secret trials were carried out using a chemical concoction of zinc cadmium sulfide to simulate how a cloud would disperse biological agents. The unsuspecting population in the east of England was sprayed covertly with the poisonous compound at least 76 times. Mike Kenner is an open government campaigner who stumbled across the Norwich and Bedford trials and whose revelations prompted two government inquiries. This article by Mike Kenner describes how he uncovered the story using files obtained under the Freedom of Information Act. During November 1998, the Sunday Telegraph published an exclusive article by Rob Evans and Andrew Gilligan. It revealed that scientists from the Chemical Defence Experimental Establishment, CDEE, at Port and Down, had in the past sprayed large parts of the UK with a toxic chemical compound, zinc cadmium sulphide. At the time of the article, I was already involved as an open government campaigner in calling for the Ministry of Defence to release more information concerning the 1963 to 1975 Port and Down Public Area Biological Warfare Experiments, which had been conducted in my local area. After pressure from various MPs and concerned residents, the Ministry of Defence eventually announced that they would commission yet another independent review which would investigate possible adverse health effects caused by the public area zinc cadmium tests. This was the second independent review to be commissioned by the MOD during the late 1990s. The first review, conducted by Professor Brian Spratt, FRS, investigated any possible adverse health effects experienced by the residents of southern England who were exposed to the massive aerosols of live bacteria emitted during the Port and Down Dorset defence trials. During the following years, I used open government legislation, such as the Code of Practice for Access to Government Information, in order to obtain more information about the zinc cadmium field trials. 
Initially, it was thought that 12 large-scale experiments had been conducted by CDEE scientists. My investigation soon revealed that this figure, figure was a fast underestimation of the true figure. By the time that the Academy of Medical Sciences had been appointed to conduct their independent review late in 1999, the number of known experiments had risen to circa 70. Fortunately, examination of each newly declassified Porton scientific report revealed evidence of yet more, as yet unknown, zinc-cadmium field trials. Again, I would make a code of practice request to Porton Down, and once again, more information would be released. By now, the tally of known public area zinc cadmium experiments had risen to nearly 100. During the course of my investigations, I inadvertently stumbled across a cache of papers relating to trials which took place over Norfolk in 1963 and again in 1964. These trials turned out to be the last in this open air spraying program and were themselves unique because they involved the Home Office and the City of Norwich Police. On occasion, this newly declassified material has revealed information which contradicts that which is contain contained in the independent review. On at least two occasions, official port and down scientific reports have been discovered which were not even examined by the review. The first, Port and Technical Paper number 794, detailed a number of experiments where radioactive gas and zinc cadmium particles were released from AERE Harwell and were tracked for at least 60 kilometers downwind. The second, Port and Technical Paper number 885, detailed the numerous circa 36 zinc cadmium field trials that were conducted by Port and Down scientists at Cardington, Bedfordshire during 1963. Even more importantly, PTP Porton Technical Paper number 885 revealed that the chemical compound used in the 1963 Cardington field trials, zinc cadmium, was sprayed by Porton scientists from a moving vehicle. This would have placed local Bedfordshire residents in much closer proximity to the source of sprayed zinc cadmium than previous trials, which had sprayed the zinc cadmium from an aircraft. Spraying this material from ground level could have led to a much higher received dosage of inhaled zinc cadmium amongst residents living close to the route of the port and spray vehicle. The fact that such a large number of potentially hazardous field trials could be overlooked by a government-appointed independent review and only be discovered by an ordinary resident using open government legislation proves to me the true worth of the Freedom of Information Act. And that's what Mike Kenner said. That's the end of the article. So there's plenty to assess from there. In the last part, we established that the RAF in their 1950s rainmaking experiments in Lynmouth, in the southwest of England, which killed 30 odd people. Not a conspiracy, very real event. And now we've established between 1953 and 1964, top secret trials were carried out using a chemical concoction of zinc cadmium sulfide to simulate how a cloud would disperse biological agents. So that's got us up to 1964. Uh, we're looking at then just well over 10 years of military experiments on the public without their knowledge or consent. That is not a conspiracy. That is a fact. It's there before you, black and white. And it's mentioned how they spray from aeroplanes. But worse, it's even how it's done from the back of a truck. And some of you that are maybe familiar with a Taurus molecular cloud, TMC 65. If you've seen that video on YouTube at any point, you will notice that it's been done from the back of a truck. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's all a conspiracy, so it don't matter, does it? Hey, it's all made up. So back to the um, all the BBC report. 
clouds of secrecy worth a watch we'll go through certain parts of this document it's also from november 2006 at the same time but it's more so the other article was a from mike kenny the bloke who discovered it all this is more the bbc's report about the program they've made so to pick out some parts of that the unsuspecting population was sprayed covertly with the poisonous compound at least 76 times aerial spraying took place a number of times over norwich at night in 1963 all of you that have uh, seen them spraying trails at night a bit of moon radiation management you'll know what that's all about sorry i mean solar radiation management moon radiation management silly me bedfordshire uh, back to the article sorry <laughs> should make that clear if you're not watching and just listening back to the article bedfordshire were, were sprayed out of the top of a converted lorry coordinated by porton down scientists at raf cardington the surrounding villages and their inhabitants were subjected to chemical emissions at least 55 times over a six-year period cadmium is a poisonous heavy metal the zinc cadmium sulfide was not tested for toxicity prior to the experiments and this is now officially admitted to be a deficit a report from port and down in 1967 four years after the trial stopped states that the short-term exposure to cadmium affects the respiratory system in humans a report from port and down in 1967 four years after the trial stopped states that short-term exposure to cadmium affects the, res the respiratory system in humans high doses of cadmium over long periods of time cause bone and kidney problems and lung cancer cadmium was used because it was cheap both reports concluded although not unreservedly that there was no significant risk to human health inside out has discovered that the independent inquiry did not study the later norwich trial reports when making their safety assessment more alarmingly they did not take into account any experiments done at Cardington in 1963 when there was a mass release of cadmium from a lorry. The story resurfaced last year after Wynne Parry, a thoracic surgeon at Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital, highlighted an upward trend in cases of throat cancer. It has been known for some years that cadmium is related to some disease. Of the germ trials, he said, I think if they were aware of the full spectrum of risks, it was probably questionable at very best. Yvonne Jarman from Norfolk is one of the family cases which have been investigated. Her mother, sister and brother have all died from throat cancer and she says she wants more answers. Even if they said it was good for the nation, how could it be for people to have this poisonous substance blown in the wind over them? If people knew what cadmium is, there would certainly have been objections, she said. This prompted a small cluster inquiry conducted by Imperial College, which last month confirmed that the incidences of throat cancer were raised in Norfolk, but concluded that the levels were not significant. Professor Lackman, who carried out the independent scientific study for the Ministry of Defence five years ago, said... We came to the conclusion that no one is likely to have suffered any harm from the amounts of zinc cadmium sulfide they might have encountered in the worst scenario during that period. So doctors say it's bad, government say it's okay. Mm, which one are you going to believe? So it's good to know those trials stopped and that took us up to about 1964, wasn't it? 1963 or something, 1964. So then we move on to the Guardian article that they politely tell us and I handily tell us uh, this article is more than 17 years old. Millions were in germ war tests. Much of Britain was exposed to bacteria sprayed in secret trials. Now a lot of you will be familiar with this article from 2002. And the reason I'm including it now is not just the, you know, yes, they were doing it again somewhere else to other groups of people. But it is to note in the first paragraph, a government report so not a conspiracy but a government report not a blog not a vlog right it's not just someone's opinion it's a government report just released provides for the first time a comprehensive official history of britain's biological weapons trials between 1940 and 1979 so we've now jumped from 1964 up to 1979 
biological weapons trials. So, uh, 1952, limb of flood, and 1953, the zinc cadmium sulfide trials, which went on up to 1964, and now we're finding out it's actually between 1940 and 1979. So, like 40 years worth. I'll put a link to this article in the info box because it's worth a read. There's um, one piece of information that I want to point out, which is right at the very end. Third paragraph on the end of the article, Sue Ellison, spokeswoman for Porton Down, uh-huh. said independent reports by eminent scientists have shown that there was no danger to public health from these releases which were carried out to protect the public. The results from these trials will save lives should the country or our forces face an attack by chemical and biological weapons. Asked whether such tests are still being carried out, she said, it is not our policy to discuss ongoing research. So in 2002, they are asked if they're still being carried out. Important down respond with, it is not our policy to discuss ongoing research. Ongoing research obviously means it's ongoing, it's research. So the answer is in what's been said. But that's all a conspiracy as well, isn't it? So conspiracies, cons, piracy, conservative piracy, which would look a little bit like this, a bit like that, and probably a little bit like this. But then that would be a conspiracy, wouldn't it? And fair play. Conspiracy in the dictionary, a little bit different. The Chemtrail Conspiracy Board added to the YouTube videos that I've put up. Um, they're claiming that it's number two an evil, unlawful, treacherous or surreptitious plan formulated in secret by two or more persons, a plot, where really the conspiracy is number five, any concurrence in action, combination in bringing about a given result. So number two, an evil, unlawful, treacherous or surreptitious plan formulated in secret. So formulated in secret, such as what we've just been discussing between 1940 and 1979 done by the British military and its research facilities which included the police. Yeah, you choose, you can choose. YouTube is deciding that this is all a conspiracy and it's not real. And yet the second definition of the word conspiracy at dictionary.com states exactly what was happening via Port and Down in the 1950s and 60s. So, conspiracy theory, or conspiracy fact, or coincidence theory. You'll have to decide that one for yourself as well. In the earlier parts, touched on the fact that they'd started putting the boards on my videos, with a link to Wikipedia about chemtrail conspiracy theory. Um, In part one of this video series, I mentioned that YouTube had got it completely wrong on one of the videos because that was a report from Ronald Reagan in 1965. Since then, that board has been removed. So that's not an algorithm doing that. That's a human being. The video has been watched, the information has been seen, they've been caught out and they've put it right. They've put themselves back in the good books. So just a quick message to the YouTube employees out there. I hope you're enjoying the videos, eh? And I hope you're enjoying seeing what your company is doing to people's videos. It's called censorship, and that's what you're involved in. Whether it's a free platform or not is irrelevant. You make your money through advertising, and of course your preferred content providers, whose popularity you boost artificially, so that lots of ad revenue is made for that person and yourselves. Um, Hello, welcome to my channel. If it's the first time on here, please enjoy your education. Anyway. On with the video. So we now see all the videos that are kind of official, about official stuff, um, official government stuff, none of them carry the boards anymore. Parts one and parts two of this video series still do. And as an example, in the International Weather Wars from November the 2016, that doesn't have a board on it anymore. So they're missing off the Weather Wars ones now, probably because they're also official sources. But then when we switch to me, and me filming our skies being sprayed out, that gets a chemtrail conspiracy theory board. So 
one of my playlists completely okay because it's dealing with factual information one playlist that shows what that factual information deals with and shows it in the real world gets labeled as a chemtrail conspiracy theory yeah okay so when we click on this chemtrail conspiracy theory link for wikipedia whereby we go along with youtube's version of events that wikipedia is a reliable source of information and can be utilized by a global corporation as a means to state opposite facts to the facts you are stating and to be able to label you as a liar because to claim you are a conspiracy theorist is to claim you are a liar okay so we click on the wikipedia link and we get an article on contrails so if we now agree that wikipedia is our source of education with youtube's one article on contrails you can also pretty much take it for granted then that you can learn about cloud seeding solar radiation management stratospheric aerosol injection which is a possible candidate for use in solar radiation management climate engineering which mentions solar radiation management weather modification ionospheric heaters if you don't know what an ionospheric heater is it's one of these so YouTube's one article versus my seven articles mm, I don't know there's just something seven articles confirming and talking about what I'm speaking about versus one article that YouTube wants to claim and speak about so seven versus one I believe seven would win by quite a, quite a big margin there so I guess the winner of that round is me